Hello my soccer universe, what a week we had this <laughs> week in Austria, I mean there was almost anything in there that you can imagine uh, and it ranges from cup competitions, we had a cup final, very atmospheric cup final, although the action probably didn't live quite up to it, then we had plenty of stuff surrounding the national team we had a really interesting round in the relegation and then to top it off we had actually an amazing round in the championship playoff and i'm happy to say lusk will be at least third at least third we cannot finish first anymore unfortunately why did Sturm need to equalize that was not necessary <laughs> but hey uh no in any case uh lusk has a european group stage secured which is the happiest news for me this week but i think overall the best news was that ralf rangnick after the cup final and as i already said cup final that was a major incident he was there after all the courtship from bayern munich he on thursday morning decided and i even made a short video about it but i want to say a little bit more about it now he decided to stay with the austrian national team and this is an absolute sensation for the Austrian Football Fair Federation to keep Ralf Rangnick. Um, I think that Bayern Munich did their part. I think Bayern Munich never quite fitted Rangnick. Rangnick is a builder in the background and he needs a lot of, a lot of uh, power there, which he's not going to get at Bayern Munich. And while financially, I think the money would have been 10 times as much as he would have earned in Austria, he gets other things in Austria. He has a lot of respect. The national team is very well liked for the offensive attacking style. Rangnick fits this national team very well. Why? Because most of the players that he has currently there, even though there are quite a few that are injured right now, went through the Salzburg school that he built. So uh, just have that in mind. This was, uh, I think this was from that point alone a real decision where he can make a lot of noise. In addition, if Rangnick Wolf would have left, he would have left the Austrian Football Federation in a really bad state because who would have followed Rangnick? There is no obvious appointment that would uh, you know, fit his style and to, to the players because we were just going through four years of folder, which were, except for the Euros, anything <laughs> but horrific. So uh, that sense, he also got a lot of power now. Uh, he can actually uh, really model from the youth national teams to the top. He can actually remodel the Austrian Football Federation, which is something that no one really thought possible. I've made plenty of videos over the years where I said I'm actually rooting against Austria because it's not working, because the amateurs leading it. Now everyone, the allure of Rangnick really turns it around. And I think it's in the end this project that actually allows Rangnick to uh, to say, yeah, I'm gonna stay with uh, Austria and not go to Bayern Munich. Huge credit to him for that. And yes, while another big injury for the Austrian national team happened with Xaver Schlager being out, I really think that with Rangnick, it's a really, really tough group that Austria has, but there's a chance to do something special. And so I'm looking forward to that. And most importantly, you have a really, really, really good chance of qualifying for the World Cup for the first time since 98, which would be another major achievement. Yes, it got easier, but I think even under the old format, Austria would stand a really good chance of doing that. So this is overall in Austria the biggest news. Now going back to the domestic league level, um, I think we should start at the cup final. I mean, for the Austrian Football Federation, this was the best possible cup final with the two biggest fan groups. Rapid Wien always brings a lot of uh, people and then Sturm Graz is probably the second biggest. I mean, Austria Vienna has something to say they are there as well, but Klangfurt is relatively close to Graz. It's probably a one hour drive. So they bring a lot of fans. It's full stadium. It's a full stadium. It's great at atmosphere. The atmosphere in uh, had of a game. Mm no cup final will necessarily succeed this is up there with the best cup finals out there i really gotta say that big credit to the big fan bases there so it was an absolute showcase yes the austria football preparation the organization around it and you know the music playing you know i really hate there are so many organized fan 
groups there that can do all the singing and chanting and whatever you don't need to have some music playing uh, at maximum volume to not feel well what's going on there but that's beside the point the game itself gotta be said was a really tight one but i felt it in the first half repeat had maybe a teeny bit the edge teeny bit the edge uh, Sturm had some good chances, but overall I felt that Rapid were really, really well in the, in the game. And we gotta remember, this was a Rapid reeling from two successive defeats to Sturm Graz uh, in the league, plus a 5 0 loss to these guys. Lusk. Something I can tell you, up until the day of the Cow Cup final, I had such a smile on my face and still makes me smile thinking about that we beat Rapid 5 0. Now, Rapid uh, were banking any th everything on this Cup final. And you could see that, that they were saving players in the game against Lusk uh, as well because uh, they wanted to give them a little bit more recuperation period uh, because there were some in injuries there. And it showed in the first half, Rapid were well in the game and they actually took the lead uh, because uh, a, um, a ball got in in intercepted, that Gruden runs on the goal, it is safe that Seidel taps in the rebound because Pras forgets him. Um, not a good result for Lusk if Rapid would have won. By the way, because um, if Rapid won, they would have secured a European group phase. Um, otherwise, if Sturm win, then third place gets it, and Lask, we know now, has already third place. Um, however, after the half, things quickly turn to around. Sturm is pressing. Uh, there's a really nicely played corner uh, that lands at Affengruber, who heads it back in, and it hits Guerfeld, goes into the net. On goal. As I said, the game was intense, but it was not great. But in the second half, it was all Sturm. There was barely anything coming from Rapid. That has to be a fair said. Then Wüttrich seemingly had gotten a go-ahead goal, but it was clearly handball. He wasn't himself celebrating. And just when he thought this is going now into overtime or, 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 or whatever, uh, a slightly contentious uh, goal was scored where... Um, Bireth and uh, Querfeld, I think, were uh, wrestling and it is not clear did he was pulled down or did he fall uh, there. It was the match commentary said, yeah, this is all right. And afterwards, because Rapid was really upset about that, uh, then the opinion swung more, yeah, this was a foul. I think it really could have gone either way. However, the ref had a um, line to go into this game and he let things run a little bit more. So the ball comes to Kielkitesch, who sees Horvath 2 1 for Sturm. There was no other winner. Sturm win the first trophy, and yes, this is an additional game, but this is a first step to a double. Well, they achieved that only once in 99. So, uh, really, congratulations, Sturm, for winning the title. I think it was overall deserved, even when you see the run. Rapid did not have to play a first uh, league team until the final yes at times the cup competition is made that you play lower division opponents but even when you could you always got a lower uh, you always got a lower division opponent even at home so in that sense i think sturm going uh <laughs> through salzburg uh for instance and also i think austria vienna um fully deserved going through to the final and winning it all Let's go to go to the, let's go to the bottom round. The uh, where it there was a huge sign for Austria Lusna. Remember, Austria Lusna need to win all their remaining games to have a chance and hope that Alta, the only team that they can still catch, their local rivals, uh, they are really less than ten kilometers apart. Don't win any of their final games. Alta need one point, but Austria Lusna. Austria Vienna uh, is beating Austria Vienna 2 0. And this is an Austria Vienna team that looked actually quite dominant in this uh, championship round, winning this championship round. They didn't show up. Uh, Grabe and Friedrichs in the first half within two or four minutes made uh, the two goals. And then Austria Vienna, yes, they had a penalty that was uh, missed, but that was it. That, that was it. It was uh, Austria Vienna were really, really uh, ashamed of their performance there. So Lustenau were still alive because if they would not have won this one, it would have already, already, already been over. And I get God even better for them because Altach, despite having a lot of possession, actually creating quite some chances, made more or less one, potentially two uh, defensive errors, but it's better for Australia to say they've made one defensive error. And Balo, one of the best strikers in Austria, taps it in for Wolfsburg to make it 1 0, and Altach couldn't find the net. And so. They are still not safe. They need one point. 
then they won't play. But it's made even more dicey because if Altach now lose the next round, it would, uh, it's not inconceivable because they have to go to Tyrol and Tyrol really want to stay ahead of Altach. And Lucina beat Blau Weiss Linz. Then the last round is a head to head, it's a derby. Alta have won three derbies in, in a row. Could they just avoid defeat and win it? But that would be probably not even that deserved or but you know the way it is. But this is how it could go. Speaking of Blau Weiss Linz, uh, they are finding a good form at the end of the season. They have a third win in a row. Uh, Pretty impressive stuff, to, to be honest. And against Tirol, uh, I think it was fully, fully deserved. Uh, Rony Waldo gave them the 31st lead. Yes, Prelets then had heads in, but at that point, uh, Blau Weiss were already the best, and Miranda just before the half gave the lead again. And Dobras with a really nice uh, uh, kick uh, made it 3 1. Laid on, Tomic pulls one back, but Blau Weiss Linz really deserved that win. And they are looking now already a little bit. We could potentially get 8, and with Sturm winning the cup. This means that 8th place goes into the playoff for the Conference League spot, so uh, they might do it. However, there's another thing for Austria, um, because Hartberg is relatively likely to make it into a European playoff. Hartberg cannot play in their own stadium, they cannot play in Graz, because Graz also has already two teams, we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, then uh, Sturm Graz have to play in Klagenfurt, because their stadium is not fit for the Champions League. That is already interesting. Uh, so Graz said no because we have two teams playing there. We have Sturm Graz uh, needing to play the Champions League. So Hartberg will have to play their games in Linz. Which means if Blau West Linz would qualify, because Lusk and Hartberg are playing in the big stadium in Linz, because the small stadium in, <laughs> uh, in Linz, the Blau West Stadium is not big enough, they would have to play in Innsbruck, because they cannot play in Salzburg, of course. Really weird stuff. Really weird stuff, and I'm so proud of all the stadiums we have, but it's still very much a mess overall. I'm glad that for once Lust doesn't have the problem. We had the problem a few years ago when it played Klagenfurt in St. Burton. So, just interesting stuff. Two teams in Graz, yes, GRK, the second team, were playing in the second league. They almost got promoted last year. They have secured on Sunday promotion. So we have not only a Linz Derby secured for next, we have a Graz Derby. We have three teams, three teams from Steiermark, Styria, uh, next year in, in, in the Bundesliga, which is quite amazing. Uh, the story of GAK, Graz AK Athletic Club, I call it in the German way, a GAK, GAK, uh, is one that would deserve a video because they won a championship in 2004, even with Liverpool in the... Um, or four or five season. They, the only loss that Liverpool suffered in that whole Champions League season was a home loss to GRK and then they vanished. And I think after 17 years of hell, they're back in the first league and I think it makes the league richer. It also adds red to the color spectrum. Let's talk championship round. Um, Austria Klagenfurt against Lask. That's the game I, I was watching. Uh, yes, the championship round, very interesting, but for me it was all about. It was clear if Lusk win, I think even if Hartberg uh, uh, drop points, uh, Hartberg and Rapid draw out order to drop points, then Lusk is secured of third place. So it's already a relatively comfortable. You're six points ahead of Hartberg, you have the tiebreaker. So it was already relatively comfortable there. There was also a teeny, teeny, teeny tiny chance to become champion still, uh, meaning Sturm needed to lose all the games because you're nine uh, points behind, but you have the tiebreaker for sure over Salzburg and Sturm, and you're six points behind Salzburg, meaning uh, you need to win the head-to-heads. Sturm cannot win any other game, and Salzburg can only win at most one more game, and that should not be the head-to-head. -head. Did not quite happen, but at least Lusk secured third place. With a 2 0 win in Clarkford, a team that we usually don't lose to uh, more moments of time beat. But this time, I have to say, it was a routine, a very professional performance. You scored the goals more or less when you needed to, but you were also lucky. I mean, there were two early chances for um, Fleck and Uso, but Clarkford were probably in the first 10 15 minutes a bad, better team, and he had had a pretty big, big chance by a header from Wimmer, who is actually on the back of this jersey. Um, onto the crossbar, uh, but then Lask took over uh, and Horvath intercepts a play out from Mara, plays it to Uzo, who taps it over to Ljubicic, 1-0 for Lask. 
Last but then again more in control of the game but you know not creating too too much but there was one big chance by Kavina again hitting <laughs> the post. So yeah, you were lucky. However, right after they have Liu Ljubicic by a brilliant pass, after a brilliant pass by Horvath, makes it 2-0 and that settled the game. There was only one more chance uh, for uh, Klang. Klangfurt. That was a relatively good, good one by Kavina, I think it was. But you win it. The only thing is you miss Horvath for the next game against Sturm Graz, which my daughter, because he's number 30 and the favorite number 30, will be very sad about to not see him in the last uh, game of the season. Still. Job done. Bravo. Dare we dream of more? The results played Lusk's way. Almost. First of all, Hartberg managed a 1-1 against Sturm Graz. Yes, this means that Sturm Graz cannot be caught by Lusk anymore. So Sturm Graz is at least second. They have That's already done. Um, the game star with Sturm Graz on the high from the cup final really storming all out. Having two or three good chances. And then Gordon Stankovic gets sent off with a red card. VAR decision. Was a rough one. And Sturm Graz were struggling because suddenly their shape didn't work because Gordon Stankovic took something away from, from, from home midfield and that's exactly what Entrop then used with a brilliant, uh, you know, taking the ball, first touch, pulling it into net. And suddenly Hartberg is leading 1-0. The faces in Graz were really fearful because you lose, Salzburg wins, Salzburg uh, suddenly first again. So really timid and all this jubilant uh, mood after the cup win is kind of in the edge. However, Sturm Graz rally, they get an equalizer through a relatively lucky goal by Kittisch, really. There were a few bounces that went his way. 1-1 one, one, and yes, Hartberg would have had the chance to win it at the end as well. But in the end, Sturm get the point. Which means no matter what happened in Vienna, Sturm would still remain in first place. But if Salzburg would win, they could not allow themselves to drop any more points. It was clear they need seven points. However, the situation got even better because Salzburg honestly did not show up at Rapid. And this is probably the biggest story this season. As much as I want to say Sturm Graz is sensational and whatever they're doing is an absolute wonderful story. We have one of those full stories also in Hartberg and in Klagenfurt. But I think the bigger story is how bad Salzburg are at the moment. And there are definitely rumors that the squad is not on the same line, that there are groups like more the French-speaking African crowd versus the Balkan crowd and, and so on, that, that don't gel, that players are already eyeing their exits from the club because, you know, they played well, they were in the Champions League and there's already contract negotiations going on. So all is not well in Salzburg land and this definitely showed. This was a repeat team that was absolutely battered where the coach made a fool of himself over the past few weeks with accusing Sturm Graz of spying, then after the Car Cup final only whining about refereeing decisions. Uh, and yes, it was a tough decision, but um, you know, the mood was not great. There were also uh, footage of the two biggest fan uh, clubs, uh, ultra groups, fighting at the Cup final with, 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 with each other. However, repeat pull, pull, pull themselves have to accept together, Got a penalty that grew converts in the 51st first minute. And then I think also the luck fell Rapid's way. There could have been a penalty, penalty given. I think it was in there, even with when VAR looked at it, there was one perspective where I thought, ah, it's all right, there's another one where it looks like a penalty. The game goes on. It is then Mayulu who is fighting off Bistrup. Pushes him down. Again, I think a foul could be given. I think it's just about okay that it was not given. It was not as contagious to me as for probably the penalty situation. Then he plays over and Buchstall taps it in. This went too far and uh, referee Jochika stuck with his decisions. Rather remarkable, I have to say. This fell majorly, not only towards Rapid, but also towards Sturm. I was happy with that decision, to be honest, because it means now La Salzburg lost 2-0. And Lask has still a chance of catching Salzburg, which would be way more than I would have ever expected out of a season that just three weeks ago, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I made a video called Peak Negativity. Two weeks ago, I thought this season is going completely to SHIT. We may finish second. Not likely, but two wins. The games are against Sturm Graz at home. 
who can clinch in Linz. If they win in Linz, Sturm Graz are champions already. However, if Lask win in Linz and then win in Salzburg, Lask a second. That's for sure. That's not all that possible. Salzburg have to go to Hartberg, who is still fighting for fourth place with Rapid. Klangford is also to say something like there. And then uh, they have a head to head with Rapid. So, everything to play for in many ways there, but that Salzburg is, that's pretty cool. I also have to give a huge shout out to Leopold Querfeld, uh, who was not, had not a good showing in Linz last week. The cup final he played actually quite well and still he was involved in both conceded goals, on goal, that was unlucky, and the foul on him. He actually went down with a big wound on his knee after a tackle early, early on. He had to receive stitches in the locker room. However, the coaching staff decided for Rapid to play for about almost 10 minutes with a man less. He came back and finished the game. That's the stuff that Rapid fans want to see. So I think the weeks of absolute mayhem for Rapid have ended. Same thing for Lask. It's just now in Salzburg that really uh, shit is hitting the fan. Sturm have now a four point lead. As I said, I need one more win and it's done. They could do it in Linz next week. I'll be there at the stadium. I personally, of course, I will be cheering for Lask. Because Sturm, you really want to clinch at home. It feels much, much better. And we anyway gonna beat Salzburg for you. So don't worry about it. In any case, those are my thoughts. Crazy week in Austria. Let me know what you thought about all that. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.